All right, today we're taking a look at how we can make some fun cards here with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. So this is a card that came to us from Eldrain, Wilds of Eldrain, and it's a two mana legendary artifact that has some pretty interesting abilities on it. So basically you can spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities, which for us is not really going to be what we're trying to do with this deck. But the relevant parts, of course, are the fact that uh, creatures with 1-1 counters on them can have the activated abilities of all cards exiled with this card. And then it has a tap ability to exile target card from a graveyard. <clears throat> if you do choose a creature card, then you get to put a 1-1 counter on a creature you control. So ideally, what we want to do here is put Grizzlebrand into our graveyard, and we'll want to exile it with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Grizzlebrand has a really nice ability where we can pay 7 life to draw 7 cards. And so basically we just need to get enough life so that we can activate Grizzlebrand. We want to draw a bunch of cards. And then we need to have a creature on the battlefield, uh, ideally. Well, obviously we're going to need to have a creature on the battlefield in order to activate the Grizzlebrand ability. And assuming our opponent can't do anything about it, we can eventually draw until we find Fists of Flame. A 2 minute instant that says draw a card until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus 1 plus 0 for every card that you draw in this turn. So if we draw like, you know, 21 cards with Grizzlebrand, well, our opponent's just dead. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so that's basically the main plan in this deck. Now the other things that we can do is once we get all this Grizzlebrand damage, uh, or once we get all these cards through Grizzlebrand, we can do things like utilize Cram Session to gain ourselves back some life. We can cast Faithless Lootings and Mox Hammers and Eye Twitches with a Burgie on the battlefield, which will net us some red mana and help us storm out a bit. And we'll be able to use Underworld Breach in order to replay some of these cards, like the Mox Amber and the lower CMC stuff. And so hopefully this is going to get us to a critical Fists of Flame or a critical Grape Shot to kill our opponent with. That's pretty much all that we're trying to do in this deck, and it should be a fun time. So... A little bit of history about this archetype. It's not really an archetype more than a, uh, a deck that exists already. So this is part, this is adapted from a turn one win deck. Um, there's a YouTube channel called Turn One Wins. They post a lot of like uh, quick win related combos. And this is one that actually in current MTGA Historic is able to win on turn one. So what you do is you basically just need to play a bunch of ley lines. You need to play Fragment Reality to exile your own Ley Line and find a Burgi, and then you just kind of go casting a bunch of these spells until you're able to Agatha's for your Grizzlebrand and, um, you know, attack in with your Burgi, who has a Fist of Flame attached to it. So that's kind of a cool combo deck, but when I played it, I realized that it was a little bit narrow, <clears throat> and apart from getting these risky turn one kills, um, you don't really do too much if you're not able to uh, kill your opponent. So while that was a very all-in-one deck, this deck is trying to have at least a little bit of a game plan after the fact, or at least be able to try to attempt our combo a second time. So if we're stopped getting to our Grizzlebrand turn, what we can do is basically just play a bunch of Fables, clog up the board, um, we can Beseech the Mirror to find any one of the things that we're missing, whether that's Agatha's or Burgi or Fists of Flame, and then we can kind of just attempt to continue and go off again. We don't really have any other closers other than just playing the game out and eventually hard casting a Grizzlebrand, which can gain us the life needed to combo off again, so that is an option. This deck's going to have a hard time against any sort of targeted removal, any sort of permission, um, but we'll just have to hope that we don't hit any of these games, or don't hit any of those matchups. After all, this is kind of just a... It's kind of like a meta play. You kind of hope that you don't that you do play a lot of creature decks and don't play a lot of um, don't play a lot of the decks that we're bad against. So should be a fun brew. Uh, it's definitely an interesting deck when it goes off. It's a cool combo, and uh, I'm hoping that I will get to show that for you guys today. So let's hop in some to some games uh, before we do so. If you like the content and you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing if you're new for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you can also support me in my quest to dominate the YouTube algorithm by liking the video or commenting on it. Every little thing helps. That being said, let's hop into some games with Grizzle Cauldron. Here we go. Alright, here we go. Round one. Let's get it. Um, so we have actually almost everything that... We actually do have everything we need except for a third land, so I'm down. 
I don't know if I want to chuck my Grizzlebrand super early, so I'll just play Tapped Blood Crypt and then just say go. Fable's pretty nice here because it's also just a Faithless looting, but, um, okay, that's not terrible. Uh, we don't totally mind that card. Um, play Agatha's Soul Cauldron here. Uh, this way now we can immediately exile Grizzlebrand if they decide to hit him. And next turn we have to Faithless Looting if we don't find a land, otherwise it's Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Let's see what we can do. Alright, so that was not it. Faithless Looting here. We do find our lands. Uh, we'll discard one card. And it's... I guess we can try not playing the other Agatha Soul Cauldron. I hope I won't be punished for that. And, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and pass. If they decide to try to take my Grizzlebrand, I'd use Agatha's Soul Cauldron, but I want to avoid them uh, killing my Soul Cauldron. Okay, it's a Heliod. That's potentially not great for us. Um, we will want to get a Fable out here pretty soon. We could also do Bergy. Bergy would allow us to Cram Session, but... The learning doesn't totally matter right now. What we do need is a creature that can attack. So we'll just play this passage here. Uh, there, Heliod gets to get big. That's going to be kind of scary at some point. <coughs> they will need to target their own Heliod here. And we just basically need to combo before they do. We know that our opponent definitely can do it, and we want to make sure that... It's not going to be a situation where they're allowed to gain too much life to the point where we can't kill them. <clears throat> um, I want to get some red here. We have access to two black sources. Actually, you know, we'll take a third black source in case Beseech becomes a thing that we need to deal with. <clears throat> um, if they tap out here, I'll go for the... Well, I don't have to go for the Soul Cauldron. Giada, so this is maybe Angels, interestingly enough. Um, we'll wait for the Agatha Soul Cauldron. We find a Grizzlebrand. We'll discard a Grizzlebrand and a Cram Session, drawing two. And there's Fists of Flame, so we can activate Agatha Soul Cauldron, exile and Grizzlebrand. We get to put a counter onto our creature, and now our token can allow us to pay seven life here. We are looking for a way to gain ourselves a little bit of life, which we can with Cram Session. Uh, we will take Environmental Sciences. Now we have 17 life, which means two more Grizzlebrand activations. And we've got our deck in our hand right now. We can go ahead and Fists of Flame onto this, making it a 28-3. We'll go in and attack. It's got Trample, and it looks like we can probably kill our opponent from this position here. All right, they'll block, and it looks like they're just going to take 26. All right, we got it. Round one. That's pretty sweet. Heliod, for some reason, becomes animated. All right, great first round. Um, we were able to assemble the combo, and luckily, with our opponent's double forest, uh, they weren't able to do anything about it. Um, pretty sweet. Couldn't have asked for a better round one. Let's hop into round two. Here we go. All right, round two. Let's go. How do I like this hand? Not very much from the mall. We have a creature. We have an Agatha Soul Cauldron. We only have two lands, which isn't, it's a little awkward. I'm inclined to get rid of one of the Fable of the Mirror Breakers to uh, make this happen. And since we are on the play, maybe we just set up a slow eye twitch play. We might just not have a turn two play Ooh, against goblins. That's not great. Yeah, so we just got to go ahead and fetch red here. We're going to cram for environmental sciences, I think. So you go. Uh, I suppose we'll just block with the eye twitch, although I don't really want to do that. All right, lucky they didn't hit anything off the top, so that's good. We find our third land, so we want to just get our card velocity going to Fable of the Mirror Breaker. 
because that's on the battlefield, I feel okay just attacking in. But honestly, I don't really need to because I know that my opponent will never gain life. But you know, if our life total is low, we won't able we won't be able to draw um, that many cards with Grizzlebrand. So this might actually be important to do. One turn here. If we find if we find our Harnfell uh, Harnfell card, uh, well, darn, we're gonna lose our token here. So we may find Goblin Ringleader. That's also not great. For a prospector, sure. And luckily, just a conspicuous nuke on the top. We go to 15, so now we're kind of getting a little uh, constrained here. The mox can go back. We'll get rid of Agatha Soul Cauldron, and we probably want Cram Session to gain some life. We'll gain four life here. And I suppose it's Environmental Sciences. I think it's worth it just a shock to start to start going here. Uh, we get to thin our deck, basically, uh, is the payment that we're making. And we're back up to 19, we can hold back a blocker to trade for a Skirk Prospector. Though they can just Muxus us and kill us, most likely. Is it Muxus? Okay, it's at least just a Goblin Ringleader. That could be worse. Uh, and then they reveal a Mountain as well. Alright, that was actually not bad. And they'll just pass on through. Sweet. So we get our Fable token back. We will be able to Swamp, Cauldron, Fable. And we are alive if we can just discard a Grizzlebrand here. <clears throat> I am inclined to discard my Fist of Flame in whatever I draw next turn. Um, is this a situation where I attack? I think it is. And I think it's also a situation where I exile something from their graveyard now. Jump Palm Incinerator, sure. And, like, it is kind of worth it to note that, um, well, I probably should have put that on a blocker, but it is what it is. Um, it's kind of worth it to note that their creatures may have some interesting abilities on them. Uh, not seeing any currently, but Goblin Matron here can find Muxus, and they can cast it now if they sacrifice most of their board. They can keep a conspicuous Snoop or a Skirk Prospector. Depends on what they do. We need them to not hit very hard here. Okay, they just go for War Chief. They can cast Matron, but it looks like they might not. They're going to hold out here. Okay, so we can discard two cards to draw up to two. Um, Faithless Looting, we could cast once from the graveyard here, so I think it's worth it to do. Unless I spend one on the Faithless Looting from hand. Then I spend another three from graveyard. Assuming I draw a land out of this then yeah i think it's worth it not to discard faithless looting it to look further all right we find fable of the mirror breaker here is faithless looting we need to find a land and grizzle brand Bergy and fable aren't the move and we got to try one more time here gotta find grizzle brand right now darn did not get it um well I guess we'll just put that down, we'll hold Kiki Jiki up, and our Agatha Soul Cauldron can take something out, but it's going to be kind of a hard sell here because Muxus is definitely coming down. Alright, well, we'll pass, hope we don't die, and see what happens. We gave it a try, unfortunately did not dig deep enough to find it in our last 40 cards. So there's Muxus, sure. Runebelt Horde Master. Everything gets big. We are taking a lot of damage right now. Might just be dead. We want to keep... So, if we can stay alive, we need to keep one creature. Just one creature. And then we ideally want to stay above 14 or 7. Those are our two benchmarks. Alright, we're about Holder Master. They're going to look for more things to do. And yeah, they're just going to go wider. This is unfortunately looking like the end. Uh, they just revealed a Cranko without conspicuous snooping, so I'm surprised that they didn't activate there. 
I think for all intents and purposes, I am just dead here, though. Yep, there's a Cranko, and we'll let them play this one out. They find Conspicuous Snoop. They find another Cranko, so now they should activate their current Conspicuous Snoop as well. And, uh, yeah, now they just go Super Light 7 and 14. It's over. So activate Conspicuous Snoop here. Or are they just going to cast something? Okay, so they're, they're kind of missing up here. They want to use their Conspicuous Snoop on the battlefield. I guess they just don't know that that's an opportunity. Um, I mean, they could be at, like, 30 creatures right now. So, you know, basically I'm just dead anyway. Um, we'll go ahead and concede this one, I think. Or, I guess, you know what, let's just let them attack. Uh, unless they take too long. Give them a few seconds here. But, um, yeah, so we gave it a bunch of try here. Uh, we looked at least six cards deep. And then uh, it just wasn't enough. Um, so we'll say no blocks here. If we had found that Grizzlebrand, though, um, that would have been draw 14 cards, hopefully find something to gain me a little bit of life, um, and then finally cast our Fists of Flame to go over the top with our Flyer. So that could have gone anyone's way there. Uh, unfortunately, we, didn't, we did not have what it took to finish. So round two in, in the bag here. Let's hop into round three. All right, round three, let's go. Triple Grizzlebrand and one land. If only I could cast my drop with one Blood Crypt. Uh, we'll mull that one. Again, we have one land. I cannot take that. Uh, with three lands here, this is a lot better. Uh, we'll put two things back. I'm wondering... Yeah, you know, I'll draw into the Fists of Flame later. Um, Fire Blood Crypt. And then we'll just curve out two and three here. Hopefully not Thoughtseize. It thankfully was not. Uh, we have our Grizzlebrand now, um, so it things are potentially on the table with the hand as is. Nykthos is scary, but we get our Fable, and even if they make us discard something, we are looking just fine. Uh, what I need my opponent to do here is not do that. I would have hoped that they would have played a creature. Unfortunate. Um, we will end turn here. Opponent gets to go. And yeah, we gotta try one more time. Let's see, what do we wanna draw discard here? Probably Grizzlebrand, probably also Mox Amber. Or is it Breach? I think we wanna keep the Breach, if it comes down to it. Grape Shot's not a good one here. We'll take the land, but uh, yeah, unideal. Um, we'll have to just wait until Fable flips, and I gotta hope that they decide to do something else with their turn. We're fine to see a Liliana come down here. Phyrexian Arena is what it is. I just hope that there's no removal for my Fable. Oh, we'll take a Bergy here. So, what Bergy can do for me is sit on the battlefield and then maybe either she or Reflection takes a removal spell. Then I can go in. This is potentially good for me. Uh, they're going to have to play a creature removal spell, and I'm hoping they just cannot do both. It's a shieldred. Okay, that kills us. That's unfortunate. Um, so now we need to figure out some sort of breach line. Yeah, this is a little awkward. So we'll have to figure out how to use Grape Shot to kill a shieldred. Oh, I could have drew cart. I could have drew cards before Shieldred came down, but then, yeah, it's a little awkward. I guess I probably should have drawn one set of cards first, but then I would have only been able to draw 14 cards next turn. Eh, possible misplay, hard to say. So we draw here, we get Cram Session. We lose two, go to 18. We play Cram Session, so we play Underworld Breach, we play Mox Amber. We play Cram Session. Yeah, I think we can get to a Grape Shot. How many cards are in my graveyard, though? There's only two. That's the issue. Uh, we'd have to exile Grizzlebrand. Eesh. Okay, so if I were to draw seven, I take 14, and then I'm just almost dead. Yeah, this is tough. That's unfortunate. Cram Session. Cram Session can get me environmental. So that's one, two, three with Breach. 
I'll have two more cards. Will I be one card away? I think I might be one card away from being able to kill Shieldred. Okay, I can go in for five here. If they kill something with Shieldred... Well, it doesn't matter for this attack. I'll attack here, see how they block, if at all. Okay, so... We should be able to kill Shieldred here. Um, we will go Ram Session. Make red. Find environmental sciences. Cast environmental sciences. Get our land. Then we can cast breach. Oh, actually, wait. We can just do grape shot now, and that kills Shieldred exactly. Okay, cool. So we've dealt with the Shieldred, and. Now we can now we can feel free to do our um, Agatha Soul Cauldron stuff. We'll pass. And if they slam another Shieldred, we will draw with our uh, Bergy Grizzle Brand card. Even if they remove Bergy, I think I need to draw seven. We're at twenty four, so we have three activations. They're at fifteen, so it doesn't really matter. This Phyrexian Arena will eventually kill them. I hope they just play another creature that isn't Shieldred, and then. Uh, we do nothing. Oh, Gorger, yeah, that's fine. Okay, we're gonna attempt to exile our Grizzlebrand. Well, actually, no, we're gonna get rid of their Shieldred first. So we can potentially keep our Shieldred, or keep our Grizzlebrand in Graveyard if it doesn't matter. Okay, so. Uh, activate Agatha Soul Cauldron on our Graveyard, choosing Grizzlebrand. Put a counter on Bergy. Activate Bergy. Uh, they don't appear to be doing anything yet, so this is good. Uh, we do not draw our card, notably. No Fists of Flame. There's Fists of Flame. And this should be lethal. Target Bergy. Bergy goes to a 21-5. We'll swing in. And this should be lethal. If they cannot do anything to kill our creature. Uh, I want to do it one more time just for the meme. All right, we got a 38-5. All right. And that's enough to send our opponent to negative 20. They go up to negative 17 before dying. All right, nice. So I was worried that they were going to hold up, like, go for the throat or something, but um, we were able to kind of check them for interaction with the Agatha Soul Cauldron activation on their end step. And so with that kind of not really showing that they were holding anything, I felt pretty solid about just going for the Grizzle Brand play. And, uh, hey, it seemed to work. Uh, that was a pretty nice round three. Glad we got the combo off one more time. We got two more chances to do it again. Let's hop into round four and see what we can do. All right, here we go, round four. Let's get it. This hand's got the cauldron. It's got the Fists of Flame, but as we've seen over the course of this uh, league, the Fists of Flame isn't really what matters. I think this is honestly a mulligan. Find another cauldron. We have Beseech the Mirror this time. Uh, that can find our Bergy, I suppose, but we don't really have the mana for it. I think we go to five here, weirdly enough. Yeah, this is a great five. Um, so we go get rid of one, two. We'll just try to play a cauldron and then discard Grizzlebrand somehow and draw into a creature. We're going to be playing from not a whole lot of stuff here. We'll start off by thinning, since we want to go pretty balls to the wall here. We'll take black, just in case we draw a Beseech. We'll have the three uh, black pips. Opponent shows blue-white, so they are some sort of permission deck. If they can tap out, if we can kind of thread the needle here, it could be good. I get the Soul Cauldron. Hopefully that just sticks around. Um, there are a lot of ways to remove this, I suppose. I feel kind of awkward about dangling it out. We're going to have at least four mana over the course of this game, so we're halfway to casting a Grizzlebrand just straight up. I think, though, if we get to turn eight, our opponent's going to be able to deal with a Grizzlebrand with single target removal, no problem. Oh yeah, we've drawn three out of our four Blood Crypts. Let's go. 
Love to see it. Yeah, they're just happy to do this. They do not mind just chilling. I'm the one that needs to play proactive here. Uh, this just might be a absolute dumpster by control, which, you know, I mean, it's important to show some of these bad matchups for sure. Um, there's a chance, though, that my opponent navigates this one wrong, and we get a chance to smack in, so hopefully that will be the case. This is a flame. I mean, we're pretty much there doing what we want to do. Uh, if a Grizzlebrand is allowed to just stick around first turn, which I do not know why that would happen, um, we would be able to do something about this. Uh, here's Cram Session. I suppose that we might want to have Mascot Exhibition here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six things going on. Uh, you know, Eliminate History might not be bad. Pest Summoning might actually be better because we can play it now. Uh, put this in tapped. Pest Summoning. Alright, we potentially have some creatures. Does this get Spell Pierced? No, it doesn't. I take it they're probably going to wrath the board then. A lot of things blow us out in this matchup, unfortunately. Like, we have to resolve a creature. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, sure. So I think they're going to play Divine Purge here. Born Upon a Wind. Sure. Is this Divine Purge? No, okay. So they were just using that to draw a card. Interesting. Divination draw two. I mean, I'm happy to see them draw cards instead of dealing with our deck. They scry. Oh man, they're definitely just looking for board wipes. I I think unless I can punch through like immediately now, uh, we're going to have a hard time doing what we want to do. But like, if we can draw a card here with uh, Agatha's Soul Cauldron, like, potentially with, with if we draw another learn card, we can uh, discard our Grizzle Brand through the learn ability. So, there's something to happen here. Let's just get lucky right now. We're holding priority on something. Oh, see, it's just that. Okay, I mean, a Fable of the Mirror Breaker is close to what we need. And they let us have it. So we have the creatures. I mean, this is just looking like a perfect time to just wrath the board, though, which is the problem. Um, I guess I could Fist of Flame. It just, all it does is really soften them up, though. Hmm. I mean, we're definitely swinging with everything. Yeah, I'm not really liking the situation. I do not feel confident right now. Assuming their next play is like a Teferi or something like that, we might not be screwed. But I think if they just untap and wrath the board, it's over. <laughs> it's potentially very over. I'll draw the, I'll uh, play the Fist of Flame. Let's try it. This hits for another few. I wonder what they're holding up here. It could be like... I don't know what it could be, actually. Uh, we get to hit them down to 14. And we'll go ahead and just crack our table passage before we forget. And uh, let's get red. Um, we are actually just one man away from straight up casting Grizzlebrand. Uh, what I'm going to do if I draw land... Yeah, okay. Planar Cleansing. Sure. Alright, let's draw land right now and we'll be happy. Oh my god, we drew it. Here's Grizzlebrand. Oh my gosh. Alright, so we can just draw back up to seven cards. That feels good. Even if they just still kill our Grizzlebrand, it's not the worst thing that could happen. Makes sense. We'll draw probably 14 here. Uh, how do I feel about this? I don't think I need to draw another 14. We also have the Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Yeah, actually, we, we can just set up to go again. Yeah, this is actually pretty chill. We actually just drew everything that we needed. That's hilarious. So, what I'm seeing is that with Unless it's Fateful Absence, which we've seen two of already, I think they're going to have a hard time dealing with me at instant speed. It looks like this is more of a deck about 
drawing at instant speed and then playing big impactful sorceries. So there's a there's a little bit of an angle here for us to get out. And I think that if I play Burgi, this is uh, even better for me. So we'll get Burgi, I want Cauldron, and then I want Mirror Breaker after, if possible. Yeah, I'd like Mirror Breaker into Cram Session. Alright, so we have two creatures out. Uh, I'll gain some life here. We're set up to draw three times now. I think I need to get uh, Introduction to Annihilation though. Oh, they take away Cram Session, sure. Always happy to see counter spells come down like that. Uh, Fabled Passage, I can't, nothing can be played this turn, so I'll just play the Cliffs. All right, we pass. Uh, we have another turn set up here. Let's see if Blue White can control, can wipe the board again. I think they definitely can. Jesus Christ, oh my god. So this is just destroy all non-land permanence. Um, okay, sure. They got it again. Luckily, we have <laughs> another Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And we also have Eye Twitch. So I'm hoping that they eventually run out of these things, otherwise we're just going to have to play some fair magic and slowly go in. Um, they have more cards in deck than us, which is a little worrying. I still have more, I still have three uh, basics in the deck, I'll grab a swamp to stay even. And yeah, we just gotta go ahead and pass. Um, what's in the graveyard? So, okay, there's the Teferi. I think we can kill a Teferi if they don't destroy or bounce any of my crap. The fact that they played this way means that they might just have a, um, they might just have a way to deal with uh, my things at instant speed. So we get to dump a Grizzle, or we could just play a Grizzle Brand too. Hmm. You know, that's not the worst thing that could happen, but we don't have our Agatha's Soul Cauldron, so we'll decline. What I'll do is play Grizzlebrand. That may, may or may not get countered. And, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, sure, that happens. So now we haven't really drawn that many cards, unfortunately. We've just drawn one. So we cannot do, we cannot kill Teferi. We can Fists of Flame though, making our eye twitch bigger, and we can see what we draw into. It's a Beseech the Mirror. Oh, we can actually kill the Fairy, never mind. Sweet. Uh, we can Beseech Sacking our Treasure for something as well. Okay, I mean, we draw another Fists of Flame. We're gonna go Beseech, Cast with Bargain. Sacking this, we're going to find another one of our Agatha's Soul Cauldrons. Assuming this resolves. And I think I'm going to do this a very specific way. Uh, either they're holding up a counterspell for Agatha's Soul Cauldron, which, you know, if, if that's what happens, it is what it is. Assuming this resolves, well, let's wait to see if it resolves. I think they counter this. If they've got counters, they definitely use it on this card. Alright, so they kind of know what's up here. That's fine. We'll go for a Fist of Flame, I suppose. Big decisions happening here. We're going to just go for as much damage as we can do, TBH. Uh, we get plus 2 plus 0 on the eye twitch. We can cram... And we can get Introduction to Annihilation in case they have, or sorry, Mascot Exhibition. Uh, in case they decide to wrath the board again, we'll be able to deploy something. And let's see, so we have one Grizzlebrand in Exile, we have three Soul Cauldrons stuck in here. We still have our um, Underworld Breach. It's going to be kind of awkward to play that though, they like what they see on top, which is tough. 
<laughs> we reflection copying our non-legendary creature here. Go swinging in for five. They can have a lot of things here. They could have the Wandering Emperor. They could have any sort of flash stuff. It's actually not any of those. That's surprising. We're going to hold out on this. Alright, here we go. They would have played a board wipe if they had... I don't know why they didn't do this before combat, but okay. Or, like, in combat. So weird. Uh, when it dies, we get to learn. I think I'm probably down to take... Maybe just Necrotic Fumes? I'm not really guaranteed to have a creature, so I'll probably take Introduction to Annihilation. We're drawing this one out for sure. Uh, I think the longer we do, though, the less we're favored. My next turn is probably just Mascot Exhibition as we look for a way to draw into our last Agathas or into our Underworld Breach. Those are probably our last two outs here. Um, and then we'll have to see how our opponent plans to win the game here. Uh, here's Mascot Exhibition. If they got a Counterspell, it probably comes down now. Alright, we got our creatures and... Opponents facing down lethal if they don't kill me. Sphinx's revelation. Okay. Well, I'm hoping this means we don't get wrath, but they've drawn six cards, so I mean, there's got to be a board white coming. Pretty classically blue-white control deck <laughs> right here. Um, oh! Ooh, this is not what I expected. Single target removal. They might not have found a board wipe. Well, this could be good. It's not over. They shock in for some reason. It's a Teferi. They could Teferi tuck something, but Teferi will die. Looks like they're actually going to do it. That's wild. Well. Now we have Grape Shot. I'm interested in playing an Eye Twitch and then Grape Shotting to kill Teferi. Grape shot will deal one to Teferi. If they prematurely counter the grape shot, we will resolve the storm copy. Okay, so we're gonna resolve like this. They actually did not deploy any sort of counter magic. Let me know if you're you get to hit for an additional two, putting them down to five again. I mean, I didn't even think we'd be in the game this long, so I'm pretty happy for how far we've come. Let's see if we can just limp over that finish line. Well, that's definitely a thing that can happen. So we get another learn out of our eye twitch. Um, I mean, we've taken pretty much almost... <laughs> we've taken over half the cards out of our library. Uh, Illuminate History now is a uh, definite hit for us. Um, well, I'm happy to play this. I think we still want Introduction to Annihilation, so we're going to discard just the Mox Amber. Discard Mox Amber, keeping Annihilation. We can actually just cast another Grizzlebrand, we'll try it. This will require them to wipe the board one more time, but if Grizzlebrand resolves, then we can draw cards. Has to be Counterspell, makes sense. So that is one Grizzlebrand, two, and three. So there's still a Grizzlebrand kicking around in the deck somewhere. Here comes our opponent. Let's see how they deal with my 3-2. They do not, so we will go ahead and try to attack in first. And at this point, I kind of think I just want Bergy to be played on the Harnfell side. This gives us more of a way to get through our deck, potentially. And really, all we need to do is 2 damage, so there's a lot of ways we can win here. Uh, we gotta keep an eye... Yeah, so this is what I was gonna say. We gotta keep an eye out for Sphinx's Revelation. I wish we had Bowmasters in this deck. That would be so good. That basically just nerfs Sphinx's Revolution just immediately. 
Fortunately, they are just going to gain that life. And I wonder how they plan to win. They're at 14 cards, we're at 23. Um, they could just deck themselves here. If it's just a Teferi kind of play, it is what it is. Sorry, um, they're going to tuck. So they're worried about their life total. So we need to try to kill this Teferi before he can Teferi ult us, but that doesn't even kill us, so I don't really know what happens here. Is this just, uh, my opponent needs to concede as the win con? Because I'm fine just drawing until you draw out. So 23 cards, I had to stay above their 14. Um, now I did see them play clear the mind in here, didn't I? Yes. So there's one in the graveyard, I don't know if they have more. So they got a discard here, quite a bunch. We get Underworld Breach, okay. What do we think about Underworld Breach? It's definitely a thing that could happen. So if I devote five mana to this, I go, well, hmm, actually, so I'd have to go, I'd have to resolve Underworld Breach Play a creature and then wait a turn. I could get a Bergy out and try to go for value, which I think is probably what I'll do. Um, so I need two for Underworld Breach, three for Bergy. Yeah, I think I have enough. So we're gonna we're gonna set this out. Hopefully, as bait for a counter spell. It's fine that our opponent draws a card. That's just one more towards them decking themselves. Uh, they allow it to happen, which is interesting. We'll cast Underworld Breach, see what happens. It's all about just trying until we eventually get through the defenses. If they have the resources to counter it, and they should, I clearly, this is my only option right now. Makes sense. So they'll syncopate it away, paying all of their mana, sure. It actually was the perfect amount for me not to be able to pay for it, which is interesting. Um, well, they have all this mana held up, so I'm going to wait until they do something with it before I do anything with Harnfell. I'm down to wait a turn. I'm not sure that they have a way to win the game. <laughs> or if they do, they haven't shown it to me yet. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so they just want me to deck myself. Okay, I get it. Pass through. I'm down to start with a Faithless Looting, I suppose. Oh, it's actually strictly better to discard Faithless Looting than Harnfell. Whoops. Whatever, it's fine. We're going to cast Fable the Mirror Breaker, see if it resolves. No need to play these Faithless Lootings. We'll wait until I have a card or two in hand. Okay, we'll pass. Alright, so Breach is gone. Opponent has drawn a bunch of cards. We have to draw our last Grizzlebrand or last Agatha's Cauldron. Alright. Board is wiped again. And eventually we'll have, if we draw either the last two of our outs, we'll go ahead and concede. Otherwise, we'll continue drawing here. Um, our win is potentially live, but I think they're probably holding their syncopates and stuff now. So not really feeling like it's too likely. Uh, this, wow, this one is really dragged on. It is about 21 minutes uh, of recording right now. We'll go ahead and take the looting here. Look for something. Boom, boom. Those can go away. Another Faithless Looting. We'll just kind of work through the rest of our library here. No, oh, I shouldn't have cast that from hand. That's a mistake. Please counter this. 
Oh, it's our Agathus. Oh, oh, what an L. Okay, I think on that note, we'll go ahead and concede this one. That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I kind of just uh, got into the motions there, and Faith was leading the way with uh, no cards in hand, meaning that it's just a mill two effect. Okay, well, I think we could have seen the writing on the wall there several turns back. Um, like I mentioned in the deck tech, blue-white control, uh, targeted removal in general are going to be pretty hard to beat with this deck, unless we can just barely sneak in. And we had, I think, two attempts. We were right there knocking on the door. Okay, so pretty solid there. Uh, decent round four. Let's hop into round five and try to do it one more time here. Let's go. Okay, here we go. So this is our final round. We got a good hand here. This is pretty much the best we could hope for. So this is Eye Twitch. Best thing our opponent can do is make us discard here. Oh, if they're ramping, this is potentially great for us. Eye Twitch is pretty harmless looking. We'll make our Soul Cauldron, and then next turn we just go Faithless Looting and then go off to the races. I am feeling optimistic. This is probably the best chance we've had out of all of these games. And I'm hoping for greatness. Harmonize? I think that's it. I think we have them. Alright, so uh, let's just go ahead and do the thing. We'll put this in tapped. We're going to do Faithless Looting. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, well, I kind of screwed up. I needed to shock that because we need to have two mana left over. Um, that's unfortunate. I will uh, attack in for one then. And we'll pass. All right, well, opponent gets one more turn here due to my misplay. Let's hope that it doesn't cost me. We got five mana here. What's it gonna be? It's a Nissa who shakes the world. That's fine. All right, now that we have three mana, we can actually do what we're supposed to do. Sure, so they're going to spank us for three. And we're going to spank them for a whole lot more right now. Let's go. We'll pass the turn, hopefully. Or they'll maybe do something with the force. Oh, God, please don't tell me they're going to fight. Oh, no. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> All right, so I have potentially just choked this. Um... We're going to make a additional play. Um, it's not really worth it to discard Grizzlebrand. Well, actually, it might be because I don't have any play next turn other than doing my birdie. So I'll just uh, go ahead and go into my hand here and discard Grizzlebrand. Okay. We can fix it. I think we can fix it. Uh, opponent is holding priority for a really long time here. Uh, they may have forgotten that they need to click. I don't know why it says it's my turn to do anything. Well, I'll just alt F4 and restart. Just to be certain. Let's get in there and uh, rejoin the game. This is definitely not a thing that I've seen before. So it might just be a one-off thing with the, the client. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, I guess it was me. That's weird. We want to discard Grizzlebrand. There we go. Um, and I want to cast Faithless Looting. I don't know why... It's telling me it's my turn. That's not. That shouldn't be what's happening. Uh, here's Burby. We will uh, sack that. And assuming they do not kill Burby, it is once again good. We'll faithless looting as well, just to be sure. And uh, Nissa, I'm not too scared about. I guess I am kind of scared about Anissa. Um, I can grape shot them like this. <clears throat> Am I really one mana away? All right. Well, my math has been really bad here. <laughs> um, I have been really just kind of grinding these games out. There's been a lot of no non-games uh, where either we just get bowled over or we play a very slow game that ultimately doesn't win. So 
an Elder Gargaroth comes down, they are getting big, and as long as they don't fight, it's probably okay. They're going to hit us for 6, we go to 11. Uh, there is still the potential for us to make it out here. Um, we will block. One blocker, and then we will activate Agatha's. They have no creatures in their graveyard, but we have an Eye Twitch. We'll start with Eye Twitch, and then we'll do Grizzlebrand. I suppose the order doesn't really matter, and it may even be correct to do a Grizzlebrand, but alright, here we go. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Go to our graveyard. Exile Grizzlebrand. Put a counter on Bergy. Bergy can help us draw now. Bergy draw. Um, did not find our Bonk spell. We'll play Cram Session and learn. Uh, we will get an Environmental Sciences to gain some more life. We'll draw another 7. There's a Mox Amber, which we do want to see. Play a Swamp for turn. Here is Fists of Flame. And we actually will need to make sure that we get a bit more than this. So we want to see what else can we do to gain life. We can Environmental Sciences. And is there another thing that does this? There is not. However, we do have Grape Shot to take out some of their opponent's creatures. So that's fine. We'll use two of our mana here for Environmental Sciences. And we'll have four left after this. Five left after. Uh, that should be enough for Fists of Flame on Bergy. She's a 21. And uh, let's see. So they can block 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Which uh, leaves me at 11. So I need to do 7 or deal uh, more damage through our Grape Shot. Um, we can Faithless Looting for free. Uh, Underworld Breach is good. Do we have another Mox in there? We do not, unfortunately, but we do have Cram Session, which brings us to uh, what we need to have. Okay, perfect. We'll submit two here. Cast a Cram Session going down a little bit of life. Get another Environmental Sciences. Uh, we have three mana left over. We'll draw again with Gurgi, and now this should be enough. If we find another Mox Amber, we should be okay. Legend Rule the Mox Ambers, and we'll just go through with a uh, Grape Shot kill as well. Get the new Mox Amber. What else can we play? We have 3, 4, 5 mana. We'll just play all the 2 mana creatures out. We'll convert our black mana to uh, red mana. That's fine. Um, and then, actually, didn't see. Did we draw another one of our Bonk spells? We did not. Um, I am losing track of what is in here. We actually have a Fist of Flame in the graveyard. Where's my Underworld Breach? Here we go. This is how we win. <clears throat> Alright, there it is. I can hardly see anything in here. Here's Fist of Flame. Targeting Bergy. One, two, three. Bang, bang. Here is Fist of Flame from hand on Bergy. And then here is Fists of Flame from the graveyard. We're going to make Bergy a 105 here. Alright, there we go. With our last mana, we're finally getting to attack in. Bergy's a 1025. Let's get in there and smack our opponent into next week. Okay, well, I could have done that a long time ago. Uh, I'm hoping that there's nothing else that they can do here. I saw them hover over their hand and I got scared for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Uh, can they give anything Death Touch and fight? It's certainly a thing that I think can happen, right? Okay, they're just doing what they can here. Alright, we made it work. Well, with that being said, that is the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is a really fun combo here. And, uh, you know, always pretty cool to make a big card. Again, definitely more of a jank deck, uh, so don't take this into the ranked queues. But, you know, have fun with it. Uh, the deck link will always be in the description. You can feel free to check it out. Let me know how you did. And uh, were you able to make a bigger Bergy than me? We'll see. With that being said, that is it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing if you're new. Or if you're a returning subscriber, like and comment on the videos. Helps me out a lot. That's all from me, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.